What I'm going to do in this section is walk you guys through like an exercise how conceptually we apply this. So we would look, again, I talked earlier at looking at, if we're just going to look at bounce rate. So the question in this case is, what can we improve about our website? How do we make it? Like, what's the low hanging fruit? And so initially, in, your, in the top 10 pages, I see four pages that have outlier high bounce rates. I see two pages that have outlier low bounce rates, which is positive. I see uh, one that I really need to look into, which is this free estimate page. And then another, <laughs> which 68% is not great, but in the context of this site, it's lower than the site average, so I actually put it in green. So my exercise here is, we're, now we're, we're gonna look at, the, what I was talking earlier about, what did I say, commonalities between the high performing pages and low performing pages, this is exactly what I mean. So the commonality in this case on the low performing pages versus the high performing pages, uh, just cutting to the chase and not going through all the pages, but just pulling them out here, is this slider. So this happens to be a slider that like goes every two seconds into a different picture. And so other than that, it's basically the exact same web page layout with a little bit different content on it. So you've got a page literally that just does not have the moving slider that engages 96% of its traffic. And then you've got a page over here that engages 31% of its traffic that has the same exact stuff. So it was a perfect little A-B test for me to take this back to the business owner and say, look, like, stop the slider. <laughs> like, don't have a moving slider on this page. You could even remove it, and now all of a sudden you would have, like, the math game is that instead of having, so he had 13, he basically had 1,400 sessions during this time frame, but only 442 counted because of the math. So even if he just eliminated that slider, he could go back up to basically 1,300 sessions, and he's paying for them. So now all of a sudden, this is when I say conversion optimization, this is basically all it is is if you, can, if you can optimize the people that are on your site, then you don't have to go pay for more people. So this is, this is that recommendation. And then this, basically it's the same thing, I just used the 68%, because it was, it was another A-B test. It was, here's a group of pages that have headlines, but then there's a group of pages where you actually see above the fold the body copy and the image, the top of the image, and they performed at a drastically different rate. So that was another recommendation of, on your interior pages, make sure that you can just, just move everything up and you're gonna get some incremental value out of that. Same exact website, use the user flow. Um, this is where I was validating that free estimate page. So that free estimate page was a website with the f no content, just the form. So, um, 100% legitimate 100% bounce rate. Like, um, nobody, wanted nobody wanted to fill out the form. So, and it, it's, it's more about, there was nothing else there of value to the user. They're paying, I'll show, so th what this means right here is Google cost per click. So this is the behavior flow. I'll show you guys this. You can sort the behavior flow by different things. So I go into the behavior flow and I sort it by the source media. Does that make sense based on what I just, so I showed you the behavior flow early and then I showed you the source media and explained what that was, where it's Google cost per click or uh, Facebook. And so you can see here, all of the traffic from Google cost per click goes to the free estimate page. See this little thin line, it's like, uh, 2% of the trap, 2% of the 524 people actually can, continued on, but they just clicked on the home page and then they dropped off. So really 100% nothing. The other 98% just immediately dropped off, didn't fill out the form. So, it's, I mean, was it working? No. What do we know how to improve about it? Add some value around, well, don't have the slider. <laughs> have some body copy that they can read with some imagery that engages them and then have the form to 
follow up after they engage. Um, so then we say, okay, here's here's a mock-up of what we would do with your pages based on that data. So this is kind of like the practical application of it. Hey, Paul, All right, our I exercise is the user, user flow on my dashboard. I'll show you how to get there, and then maybe uh, so if you go to. Here we go. So this is a user flow. If you go to um, behavior and then behavior flow. See, it doesn't even show up on oh, hazard behavior. behavior. She gets new versus returning frequency and engagement. That's it. Can you set up the filters though? Um, I, mean, I can always watch by you. I don't know if I'm just missing a button. You might be under, uh, <clears throat> it's not worth doing. audience, so don't go to audience users flow, try behavior, behavior flow. See if that gives you what, if that works. Oh, there you go, sorry. A lot of flows. A lot of behavior. There's okay. a couple different flows. Thank they you. should both do the same thing, but. Thank you. So it's going to default you to landing page, and that that that's going to be a breakdown of all the different sites that users enter in on from your to your website. Um, what I did in that previous screen, what I like to do is go to uh, this drop down here, and then under acquisition, do source medium because that's going to show you more around. It kind of shows you both how people find you and what they do at the same time which I like better than just seeing how, you can see how they enter and then what they do, that's what this is. So with, um, cause we have agency people here for sure, what do you, like what's sort of the quick answer cause you can't show that to a client, right? Yeah. Like, boom. <laughs> so well, what do you do really quickly if you wanted to generate this report for your people? Um, just kind of pick like one or two main points out of this. And so in my mind, it would be, um, it's always a worthwhile exercise to go into the behavior flow and just see if there's anything that stands out to you. So the first thing I would look for would be, um, what will like, where do I see this orange or red color, whatever color that is? Um, because the more of that color that you would see, then that would kind of indicate a problem because that's, that's representing drop-offs. So drop in in the behavior flow context, like drop offs are bad. You want to see multiple levels of people stepping through your site. Like you want to see as much of this as possible. Um, and this is a very interactive tool. So I would look. Number one thing I would do is I would say, where is there the highest level of orange or red, and then identify that as kind of a problem area. And then I would go look at that page. Actually, I would use it as how would that user would use it. And then that kind of unlocks what the recommendation is. So it's really, it's, it's never really about, I'm glad you asked this, because it's never really about just looking at only the data. You've got to look at the data, and then you've got to look at what a user would do. What does the user see on that page? And then you kind of see, oh, well, now it starts to make sense why we've got an email pop-up on that page. That's why everyone's leaving. Well, now the email pop-up doesn't work because everyone's leaving. So something like that would make sense. The other thing I would do is, again, I would go, so that's number one. Number two is like going into source medium will tell you what does a user do when they come in from a particular marketing channel. So as an agency, it's a little bit more of like diving in, maybe trying to figure out something that the client doesn't even really know. So in this case, this is a good example. So they've got Google campaigns and Bing campaigns. So I would click on the Google campaign and I would say highlight traffic through here and then it's going to tell you it's going to highlight all the traffic that comes in through Google cost per click now you can see like what are the top performing pages from your Google cost per click campaign now you look at the orange or red like I was telling you so here's one your your Google cost per click campaigns, users from your Google cost per click campaigns 
are more likely to navigate through your home page to an interior page that you want them to go to than your average user. So keep sending users from your Google cost per click campaigns to your home page because in your vertical and with your website, that's working. I never want to make like a blanket statement like everyone should always send all their Google cost per click traffic to their home page because you, you know, it doesn't always work that way. Um, but that would have to be how I would use another way. So, and then you could always compare that to Bing too, right? So is that the same for Bing traffic would be another question I would look at. What are the top performing pages for the Bing traffic? Products, it looks like um, when on the Bing campaigns, they're sending people through products, so you have less orange here than your site average. So even at a very, very high level, like that kind of stuff is going to help recommendate, like client recommendations on their marketing. So not stuff that clients necessarily, would, and d definitely not stuff that like executives want to see, but, but analysts, in order to unlock what the executives are trying to achieve, or marketing, I would say marketing department personnel, in order to walk into a meeting and say, all right, like this is what we need to do to achieve the goals. This is how this tool is gonna, this tool will get you there. 